Well, good morning. It seems that we are backtracking today. I know it's a little confusing to me. Three days ago on Thursday, the church calendar has the celebration of Ascension Day, the day that commemorates Jesus ascending into heaven. And it's been documented that there was something that ascended off of the roof here at Christ Church. Just leave that with y'all. Next Sunday is Pentecost, the day of great celebration of the Holy Spirit being unleashed in the lives of the believers. And today, we find ourselves in the Gospel of John again on the evening of Monday Thursday. We join the disciples after Jesus has washed their feet, after Jesus and the disciples have shared their intimate meal, and just before Jesus walks into the stream of events that will include betrayal, denial, and crucifixion. The rapid experience of all these events can be mind-boggling, but I invite you to join me again in this very special time when Jesus emphasizes his care and his Father's care for the disciples. The prayer in John 17 is called the High Priestly Prayer. And I confess my understanding needed to be informed. I could not figure out why we called this the high priestly prayer. But here's an explanation. Jesus prays to the Father. He prays for himself. He prays for his disciples and he prays for all believers. This and his sacrifice recall the position and action of the high priest in the Old Testament, starting with Moses and Aaron. The high priest was selected from among all the priests and went alone into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement to offer sacrifice that would cover the sins of the people, but not permanently. Jesus does all this by the sacrifice of his life once and for all, when he is crucified for all. He is the high priest, and the prayer he prays refers to his position. His position that was symbolized in the Mosaic tradition. The prayer he prays today is prayed to his father in the presence of the disciples. They hear him pray for them. Jesus is enfolding them in his intimate communication with the Father. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Jesus has the presence to gather them with him as he, his heart reaches to the heart of the Father. Jesus, as their shepherd, gathers them around to experience the care and intimacy that he and the Father share with each other. He knows what the events of the evening and coming days will cost him in suffering and sacrifice. He knows the disciples will need this reference very profoundly as their lives are enveloped in the clamor, confusion, and chaos that will get underway this very evening. Judas will betray. Peter will deny, some will scatter, and all will keep their distance as he gives his life for them, for us. He gathers them in one of those thin spaces where heaven and earth are no longer separated by distance, where God and Jesus are together with each other 
and with them. It is from this moment of closeness and intimacy that events flow that will change the world forever. Events that will change their world. But the intimate relationship that draws Jesus draws them to this evening will be a reference point and a point of instruction for their lives and others that the gospel will touch. The events that churn like waves around them, that gather them and propel them, that confuse and cloud their expectations, will eventually give way to deep reliance and their connection with him. It is all love. Love that has a cost. Love that inspires. Love that connects. Love that will take them to the crucifixion, to the resurrection, to his return to them, to his bodily departure and the ascension, and within days to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. The events seem like a roller coaster experience. I like roller coasters. Well, let me adjust that statement. I like a lot of roller coasters. I do not like the ones where you experience all the forces of inertia, gravity, and weightlessness in the dark. My brain gets overwhelmed and the forces experience caused me a lot of confusion without a reference. Okay, so I love some roller coasters. I remember the first time I rode the log flume at Six Flags Over Texas when I was a little girl. I think all of us have probably ridden that one. It inspired all the other log flumes across the country. Now they call it El Acerajo, but it's the same ride. A fiberglass log is carried up the first hill by a conveyor belt, then drops down the flume for the first big splash. Wander nudges the log through a series of easy curves, then up another lift hill with a longer drop and a big splash at the end when everyone, all six, are soaked with water. On a hot day, it's a completely thrilling and refreshing experience. And we are reading The Way of Love. And the chapters for this week, Bishop Curry tells of a roller coaster experience in his life and our experience in the Episcopal Church. Bishop Curry candidly talks about having emergency brain surgery six weeks before going to England to represent the Episcopal Church in the U.S at the worldwide gathering of bishops. The main issue, shaded by interpretation of the marriage canon, was one of great difficulty, same-sex marriage. After days of heated discussion, the Archbishop of Canterbury introduced an informal vote. Would we walk together in Christ even though there might be distance between us. The show of hands indicated a commitment to godly love that transcended any division. And the next day, the bishops, all dressed in their purple, washed each other's feet and were walking barefoot across the floor in a thousand-year-old crypt. Now that's a mind picture, isn't it? Bishop Curry says, the debate was about walking together in love despite our differences. Bishop Curry, recovering from the brain surgery, tells us that he wrote a statement that night that was read just prior to the formal censure that was being cast on the final day. The final sentence of that 10 paragraph discourse brings love into its place, even in contention. Regardless of the outcome of this vote, 
we shall continue to walk together in love and that love that unites us as brothers in Jesus Christ. He adds an explanation. Knowing that he was not capable of writing such a long text to focusing his thoughts so close to his surgery, he shares this. Summoned by prayers, the spirit moved through me that day. I'd experienced it before, but never so powerfully. The Holy Spirit that moved in that group, that moved so powerfully in Bishop Curry, is what the disciples will experience on Pentecost, the experience that we celebrate next Sunday. On Pentecost, power and connection will be on full display and propel the work of Christ into the whole world. Power that cannot be experienced without being initiated in the commitment and intimacy shared in the encounters that the disciples, that we share on this night before the crucifixion. The love that is emphasized in our reading that we can experience will connect with our inner being, their inner being, and ours. We may just experience the power that astounds the disciples as they are saturated and drenched, the power that will send them as gospel bearers into the world. I, for one, am looking forward to getting soaked. <laughs>